As you can see, my name's Steve Sitton. I'm an engineering manager here at Medidata. Uh, my Twitter handle's on there. I'm going to be talking about learning Scala as an engineering manager. This isn't going to be as technical as what you've heard before, but I hope it may apply to, to some people here. Um, so, as I joined about eight months ago. Um, I've come from a Java background, so, but obviously joining a team of Scala engineers, I wanted to kind of get involved. I wanted to understand about code reviews, give my opinion in conversations. So I wanted to kind of learn, learn Scala, but obviously I had other responsibilities. I didn't have a lot of time, so I needed to try and learn Scala in kind of the, the time that I did have. So this is a lot about how I can fit that in and maybe suggestions that may apply to everyone some people here. Now, so I'm going to look at it in two ways. How I started learning, so how did I initially start from a zero background, and then how do I continue learning, how I've got that, um, you know, basic, hopefully a foundation. So find time, so block time, and then go to a darkened room. Now, technically a darkened room doesn't really matter, but I think it works well for us. We like it. We're in the zone with a, with a screen, with no other distractions, but the main point here is to find time, block time, commit to that time, and just do that learning no matter what, no matter what happens. And do some research. Like, I mean, I, I came from a Java background, but everyone obviously approaches Scala from a different way. But it's important that you apply your research to where you've come from, because um, that helps with your learning from, from Scala, uh, to Scala. So obviously, Java, Scala, they're quite similar. There's lots of information, there's lots of, um, blogs, articles about that, so it obviously helped me, but if you apply it to something relevant to you, it helps with that understanding. Obviously, we know videos, blogs, books, there's tons of stuff out there, so it's, it's all about, these can be done in short chunks, you know, videos can be half an hour, an hour, you can find time, you can put that time aside to learn. Obviously, articles, you can read them quite quickly. There's two that I would recommend, obviously, just demystifying Scala, which is quite a good video, starting from scratch, gives you a good foundation, and then, so you want to be a functional programmer in six parts on Medium. This isn't specifically about Scala, but it's a good to get your head around that um, functional mindset. Like I'm sure many people have done the Coursera course. Um, it's probably about 80% do that. I, I would recommend it, functional programming principles. I must admit, I, I did find this quite intense when I did it. I think it's my Java background that it really took me kind of some time to do, but I think it's something that you really have to spend time, spend time to do. But, so although I did find that quite intense, I found that if I supplemented that with other resources, then I was able to, able to help with the, the terminology, what I was learning in there. So you can look at um, handbooks, cheat, um, cheat sheets, so I have to say that quite slowly because it comes out a bit differently otherwise. Um, but I, I used that like just in short times to supplement the terminology that I was learning on Coursera as well as um, kind of just learning how different, different things are doing. I actually quite enjoyed the Hello Scala. It's based on the book. It's quite simple, but it helped me to start with and it, it just helped with that kind of foundation to go along. But, um, but there's, there's, there's lots of good help out there. And the only other thing I'd say is just, just don't Google until you really need to, especially with Coursera. You get so much satisfaction out of just solving a problem yourself that you know sometimes you can just spoil it if you find the answer and then you know you've just um, uh, you know you've just kind of haven't really figured it out in your head so I would just kind of recommend I would recommend don't google in too early so these, these are just ways to get started I hope they may apply to some people here even if you're continuing but then so once you've got that foundation one thing that I really like is the Scala worksheets or scratch files. Now, I, I could be wrong here, but I don't, I'm not sure if everyone still uses it or uses it as much, because obviously we have our Scala programming that we're coding, we have our tests, and we tend to work that way. But I find the, the worksheets just a great place just to explore, try expressions out, see what works, see what doesn't. For me, that's a good thing that, that I just want to keep doing. Obviously, code reviews, I'm sure we're all part of it, but it's a great way of learning. So look at other people's code, Try it out, see how it works, see if you can try different ways of doing it, get people to code review your code, just to get some feedback. The one thing I really did enjoy is just solving puzzles. These are great kind of time box things, there's no pressure on them, but they can usually be done in a, just in a short space of time. And they're usually quite fun. The advent of code I actually found quite useful. They were, it's obviously themed around Christmas, but um, 
but that doesn't really matter for the problem you're trying to solve. But, but they, were, they were good fun for learning. And obviously you can take non-blocking work, you know, whatever that is, small stories, text debt, tech debt, um, tooling, anything that's not going to block the team from moving. It doesn't matter if you don't finish it, you can just put it into the time slots that you have. Now I know this is a bit of a scary thought, but you can actually talk to other people as well. You can move away from Slack, uh, sorry, yeah, moving away from Slack and ask questions, even stupid ones. I'll probably put it to everyone here that I'm probably the king of asking stupid questions. But it, it doesn't matter, we need to get out there, just ask questions and just learn from other people. And then obviously, look, we're, we're all here now, but network with community, I think it all helps. So just to sum up very quickly, Give yourself quality time to learn. Quality is the important part here. Time without distractions, time when no one else you know, can get in your way. Turn off Slack notifications, turn off email, just, just so you can concentrate. And be reali realistic about what you want to achieve. I know that as an as a engineering manager, I'm never going to be a guru at Scala. I kind of accept that, but I do want to get involved. I do, do want to kind of have that basic understanding where I can at least um, get involved in some conversations. And above all, have fun. I mean, if you're, not, if you're not going to enjoy it, there's no point in even trying to learn. Um, I know there's a few links on there. I'll put a, I'll put a blog out to my Twitter. Um, I've kept it quite brief, but thank you very much.